the hearts of the Clarus and missionary sister of the blessed sacrament ought to be like a lyre whose sweet and most tender hymns of her love and gratitude will rise to the throne of God. Do you need anything else, my mother? No. No, I'm fine. The only thing I want is to do the will of God and to live for Him to the end of my life. You want to play your melodious hymn once again, don't you? Do you remember when you wrote The Light of the Heart? When God our Lord had me in the cloister of my beloved monastery of the Ave Maria, being the mistress of the novices, but already glimpsing at the future, a multitude of missionary souls that would carry to the entire world the love of God and that of His most holy mother in the title of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Is then I started to write. Behold, the new sister, whom the merciful love of the Son of God has chosen to make her one day his spouse. Just like a delicate little plant, he has transplanted her to the garden of religious life, so that, growing under his care, she may produce beautiful flowers of virtues and holiness that will excel continually their perfume towards heaven. Manuela de Jesus, what do you want? I want for the love of God to enter this monastery, to serve God, to love Him with all myself, and to pray for the entire world. Let us give thanks to the Lord. to the monastery, Manuelita showed great desire for holiness. Please pray for me. I want to be holy, like St. Therese of the Child Jesus, saving souls, especially those of the infidels. You will assiduously attend the practices of the novitiates like a little one who knows nothing but is eager to learn the delicate science of sainthood, becoming the angel of the novitiates. Praise your Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever. Please, sister, I want to ask you for a favor. Could you please help me to carry these buckets of water to the other side of the garden? Yes, they are very really heavy. <laughs> Let's go. What can be heavier than our thing? Sister Manuelita, always available and always with a smile on her face. May God bless her. Counting on you, my mother, united to you, directing to you our souls, living in them, being their light, their warmth, their intelligence, their enthusiasm, their zeal, their fruitfulness, their heart, shall we not be completely sure of obtaining victory? After the novitiate, 
Manuelita was admitted to the temporary professional vows. On that occasion, she had a mystical experience where she had a promise from the Blessed Virgin of Guadalupe. If it is in God's plan to make use of you for the words of the Apostolate, I promise to accompany you in all your steps, putting on your lips the persuasive word, the softened hearts and sanctifying grace in them. I also commit myself for the merits of my Son to give to all those with whom you have any relationship, and this even if it is only in spirit, the grace of final perseverance. For the love of God, to please him alone, the Clarissan missionary sister applies herself to the fulfillment of all her duties. For him, she obeys the orders of her superiors promptly, happily, and exactly. For Jesus, she endures joyfully the weaknesses of others. For him, for his sake, she spontaneously volunteers to do all the tasks and nature loot. For the sake of him, she chooses always the last place. It was not you who chose me. It was I who chose you. So go forth and be a fool. Your foot must endure. John 15, 16. Consecration is the act through which an object or a person becomes sacred. It introduces it into an order with a particular relationship to God. It marks it with a character that sets it apart from common uses. It compares upon it a religious value, incomparably superior to all other values. It imprints upon it the character of exclusive ownership of God. The foundation of the religious consecration in its strict sense is a profession which the religious, impelled by faith, makes in response to the divine call through the emission of the three public vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience accepted by the Church. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for all your benefits, goodness and rents, forever and ever. May the source of all the faith for the party. Yes. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He let His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May He look upon you kindly and give you peace. May the Lord bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sister Guadalupe. Could you please clean up the refreshment? Eh? Sister Mary yet to finish the iron. Mother, again? I'm not feeling well. Each one of us are here to practice charity. I wouldn't like to remind you that. Do not get tired of doing well. This is the best way to show Jesus our love. And remember, in our superiors, the will of God is manifested to us. Thank you, sister. When your hour of adoration arrives, the most beautiful hour, Prepare yourself some moments with interior acts of love and humility. Abandon yourself to the lavishness of His merciful love. Remember always, but especially in this hour of conversation, 
along with him, that you have all power over his heart to negotiate for the salvation of souls. Bring many workers into your vineyard, O Heavenly Father. Take us, take me. I want to offer all my love. I want to leave everything for you. I want to sacrifice myself in the heart of Mary for souls. You will know how to make the joy of your life consist in the adoration of God's most holy will. Every event, however painful it might be, will not thus be able to disconcert you. Your spirit of faith will make you see in everything that holy will which so, so lovingly reveals itself to you. Yes. Mother, I'm just coming from Cuernavaca. I met the religious vicar who handed over to me the letter of approval for the foundation. I'm so happy, Mother. Oh, great. How good is the Lord? His mercy is forever. Please, Mother, allow me to share the good news with my sisters that have been praying for it. Sure, let's go together. of the new foundation left for the city of Cuernavaca. At the forefront of everything was Mother Ines, who watched over the spiritual, material, and legal formation of the work. She faces economic difficulties, the lack of benefactors, and loneliness as a test of her faith. Yet, she trusted in divine providence. In that filial and loving abandonment to divine providence, in the exact fulfillment of the divine will, lies the source of energy of every missionary. Yes? Nuestra Madre, Nuestra Madre, it's almost time for lunch, but there is nothing in the kitchen to cook. What are we going to do? My daughter, ring the bell at the appointed time. God will provide. Yes, Nuestra Madre. Nuestra Madre, Nuestra Madre, look! An old man from the casino came and told us that one event canceled. They gave us all the food. We have even more. The more we trust, the more we receive. Let us give praise to the Lord. Let's go and enjoy. The intimate feeling of the soul of the sister who lives of trust, for neither her weaknesses, nor her defects, nor her deficiencies separate her for the immense confidence she has in God's kindness, in whom she not only rejoices, but jumps for joy. Her audacious confidence makes her fearless and courageous in the face of all kinds of difficulties giving an illustrious example of them, especially in the processes of the transformation of the congregation, especially when in Puebla ideas of separation were arising. Nestor Madre, what is going on? We are afraid. Take us to Cuernavaca with you. Here, yeah, everything is very strange. As it stands, it is not convenient for you to come with me to Cuernavaca because it will be an obstacle to the procedures for the transformation. 
Then what can we do? Let's trust the Lord one more time. I'm sure this project will not die because it is His. The Clarissa Missionary Sister takes the courage to undertake the work of the salvation of souls, giving herself in her beneficent and indefatigable action with all her prayers and sacrifices, as if the success depends on her. Nevertheless, she never forgets that only God's grace is capable of working these transformations. Do not forget, my daughters, to be missionaries is our dearest right, our sweetest obligation, and our sacred duty. Duty and right that we should not forget at any time in our life. Be missionaries. How? Even to give up our life if necessary. Where? Everywhere. When? Always. Measure obedience like him who was obedient unto death even death on a cross but like him with him and in him The liar of the heart of the Clarice and Missionary Sister has only known how to produce sweet melodies to rejoice the heart of her beloved, now burst forth more than ever with soft and delicious approaches like the swan that sings more sweetly when it is going to die. My mother, the light of heart is a synthesis of our own life. It's how my mother lived and we hope to play the same melody. Allow me, O oh God, that I be for my sisters in the region. The little star that illumines their life, the little sparkle that gives them warmth, that from your glory I may continue fertilizing with my work, my prayer, my beatific adoration, the seeds that I have planted on earth for your greater glory. Everything is done. Thanks be to God.